Can everybody hear me all right? I guess I'll need to speak up here. This is good. I just need to move all around here. Um, oops. Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave it like that because I'm just going to go. Oh, there we, that's even better. Um, all right. I am Jim Mars, and I'm a native of this area. grew up here in Fort Worth uh, about 30 years ago. Uh, my wife, who teaches public school, and I, who at that time was a uh, reporter for the Forest Star Telegram, we looked at each other and decided, you know, we better get out of the city while the getting's good. So for the last 30 years, we've lived on a, what I call a little ranchito uh, up in Wise County. Uh, I always tell out-of-staters that I raise registered quarter chickens. <laughs> <laughs> you know what a quarter chicken is? And just 25 cents. <laughs> Cheap chickens. <laughs> but they lay eggs if the, if the raccoons don't get them. So anyway, I am a native of this area. I only live now about eight miles, I guess, from Aurora. So a lot of you are from this area. You've probably heard the story vaguely, a little of this, a little of that. It's floated around here for, of course, for years. I got, I got involved in it in 1973. And uh, when I first heard the story that, oh yeah, a spaceship crashed here in 1897 and the pilot was uh, not an inhabitant of this world, you know, I went, yeah, right. So I was as skeptical as anybody, but I want to tell you, and I flip-flopped over the years, as, as you'll see when I make my presentation. Um, first, I talk to somebody, and they say, oh, no, it's just all a hoax. Oh, okay. And then I talk to somebody else, and they say, no, my daddy was here. It really happened. I go, oh, well, maybe it did happen. So I went all around. But then the clincher, and I was, we'll get to this towards the end of the program, was the scientific investigation that the UFO hunters did last summer uh, that was the subject of a program that aired, uh, actually it aired back about Christmas time and then I understand from Lance it was rerun here, uh, I believe Wednesday night, was that it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. So, uh, and of course, unfortunately, the, you have an hour-long program and they got to dra dramatize things and so I think maybe some of the pertinent points may have gotten lost, so, but we'll get to that. Okay, the Aurora spaceship crash of 1897. Uh, is this thing on? There we go. Uh, the basic story is, is that in my Aurora sign kind of got out of whack. But the uh, basic story is that in 1897, April 17th, a silver cigar shaped object fluttered down near the earth, seemingly in some sort of trouble, struck a tower. Uh, of uh, Judge Proctor and uh, exploded with a big explosion. And uh, this will give you an idea, if you don't know where Aurora is, it's just right there on 114 between Rome and, and Boyd. Um, this is what it looked like in 1973. Uh, the little building there is actually a little gas station at the time and today it's been painted green and I think they sell curios and antiques or something, or I'm not even sure if it's still in business. But the little building's still there, and if you ever go by there, 114 is right over here, um, and then right behind here is a hill, and up on top of the hill is kind of a pink brick home, and it's right next to that home that the crash occurred. Uh, the home is now owned by the grandson of Brawley Oates, uh, who I interviewed back in 19... 73. The story was carried in the Dallas Morning News on April the 19th. And it said, I don't know if you can read that, I can barely read this little eight point type, but I'll just read you the story. It says, a windmill demolishes it. Aurora, Wise County, Texas, April 17th, to the news. About six o'clock this morning, the early risers of Aurora were astonished at the sudden appearance of the airship, which has been sailing through the country. It was traveling due north and much nearer the earth than ever before. Evidently, some of the machinery was out of order for it was making a speed of only 10 or 12 miles. Any of you know anything about aviation, you know that what's airspeed? It's about 80, 90 miles an hour or more. You can't stay in the air at 10 or 12 miles. And gradually settling toward the earth. It sailed directly over the public square and when it reached the north part of town, collided with the tower of Judge Proctor's windmill and went to pieces with a terrific explosion. 
scattering debris over several acres of ground and wrecking the windmill and water tank and destroying the judge's flower garden. Um, <laughs> the pilot of the ship is supposed to have been the only one on board and while his remains are badly disfigured, enough of the original has been picked up to show that he was not an inhabitant of this world. <laughs> Mr. T.J. Weems, the United States Signal <coughs> Service officer at this place, which sounds fancy, I think he was the telegraph operator, but you know, that's all right. Um, and an authority on astronomy, probably had a telescope. <laughs> gives it his opinion that he was a native of the planet Mars. <laughs> okay. Well. Now, if you stop and think about it, look how we progressed. In the 50s and the 60s, the big question was, do they come from Mars or do they come from Venus? And then we got a little more sophisticated in our knowledge, and by the 80s and 90s, it was, uh, do they come from Alpha Centauri or Zeta Reticula 4? <coughs> and today, we're in a little bit more advanced in our sophistication and our knowledge, and the question now is, do they come from another solar system, another galaxy, or do they come from another dimension, or perhaps another time? So we're slowly but surely getting there. But back then, he thought he came from Mars. Uh, the ship was too badly wrecked to form any conclusion as to its construction or motive power. It was built of an unknown metal, resembling somewhat a mixture of aluminum and silver, and it must have weighed several tons. The town is full of people today who are visiting the wreck and gathering specimens of the strange metal from the debris. The pilot's funeral will take place at noon tomorrow. The fourth record, which was a, this was in the Dallas Morning News, which of course is still in publication. In uh, Fort Worth, it was the Fort Worth record that carried the account, and uh, they said the pilot was given a Christian burial in the Aurora Cemetery. So we took care of that guy for months. Um, and uh, that was about the extent of what most everybody knew. The, there's the story, and here is a picture of the tombstone that was published uh, in May 1973 in the Dallas uh, Morning News. Um, I correct, I need to correct that, that's not true. That was in the Dallas Times Herald. And the way I know this is because it says the photo by Bill Case. Bill Case was the aviation writer for the Dallas Times Herald, which is now defunct. And I was his counterpart at the Star Telegram at that time. I had to start off as a police reporter. And by 1973, I was the military aviation and aerospace writer. So I do know a little bit about aviation and aerospace. In fact, uh, I uh, made a deal with Ed Boardman, who had a flight school at Meacham Field. And I wrote some articles for him for an industry publication, and he gave me free flight lessons. And I had 12 or 15 hours in, plus all the schooling, and all I lacked was my solo flight to get my pilot's license. But it suddenly dawned on me, hey, I'm just an old poorly paid reporter. I can't afford to buy an airplane. And I said, I can't even afford to go out and rent an airplane every few months, you know? And by that time, I had learned enough to know that, uh, and any of you that know aviation, if you don't stay proficient, then you practically, you know, if you go six months a year or more and you haven't flown, then you practically have to start all over again. So I was a flight school dropout. <laughs> but I just